Hey, 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 day 438 of what she up to now. It's talking about every day, the transition from offline brick and mortar, real businesses, corporate America, to, because corporate America, then businesses in different industries, then the online business world. A couple years ago, I had the opportunity to ditch what I was doing and try something else. And I decided, well, I'm going to test out and try this online business stuff. People are making money. They look happy. They've got more freedom than I've had in the past. I want to go for that and see how that works for me. And it's been an interesting journey and an interesting ride. Uh, some things have worked out really, really well, better than I could have ever imagined. Other things have just plain stunk and made me want to quit and wonder what the heck am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why don't I just go back and, and get a real J-O-B or go back to corporate America or start another brick and mortar business because those are easy for me. Those are so much more concrete and easier for me to understand. But no, I haven't done that. So I'm thinking about challenges today because I love challenges and every day I'm doing a, a certain number of challenges. Just finished a 365 day daily Facebook live challenge. For, so for a year, every day we went live and I finished recently my year long and it was actually 410 days in a row of doing one thing every day that stretches my comfort zone from a little journal book called do one thing a day every day that scares you. And now I'm doing and today was day 94 of doing one thing every day that makes you happy. And I just do that. First thing in the morning, I want to be really transparent. I do it first thing in the morning to get my voice going. And for another reason, for selfish reason of, I want to focus on what I want. I always am telling everybody and coaching everybody, focus on what you want, focus on what you want, focus on what you want. And I do that, but sometimes I don't. And I want to be happier. So one of the things I decided this year was that I was going to focus on happiness. And I was up at the cabin, which is always a happy time, one weekend this last summer. And I knew I was finishing off the, the comfort zone one. So I thought, well, what's next? What They just so happened to have another book in the series, Do One Thing Every Day That Makes You Happy. And that fit really, really well. I actually, I'll, I'll be honest, I was going to do creative because I wanted to be more creative. I love creativity and it, it makes my heart happy, which is another way of focusing on and being happy. And I looked at the book and it was it's awesome, but it's got too many physical activities in it. So to do that as a challenge, everybody would have to have the book. And I'm not out there to promote and sell somebody else's book. I'm out to uh, share what helps me and what might help other people as well. So to make them all go out and get a book that I don't even know or care about. I mean, I like the book. I, I'm really, I love the authors, obviously, because I'm sharing their stuff, but, <clears throat> or their focus on happiness, but, and on comfort zone. But I don't think I feel like I had to have everybody go out and get this book in order to participate in a, a fun, free challenge. So happiness made more sense for me. And don't we all want to be happier? Because if we have happy moments, it leads more, and we focus on more happy moments, it leads to more happy days and more happy days lead to more happy weeks and months and years and a happy life. And so what better way to achieve that than to just take one little thing and one little action every day to consciously consider and focus on happiness. So I'm doing that. I'm also doing personally a hook story offer exercise because I want to get better at my hooks, my stories and my offers. And the only way for me to do that is to focus and concentrate effort. And I like to do that through challenges. So I set myself up 12 days ago, a 30 day challenge to just do a hook, a story and an offer every day. Now, I've been doing them every day. The problem is I'm not sharing them every day, which is silly. So now I think yesterday I shared day six's hook and story and offer, but today I just am creating day 12's. So somehow I need to get better at getting that out and getting it tested. Super sorry about that. Before I, um, before I get behind, I want to do it every day and I want to publish it every day. So I'm kind of missing the ball on that. But since it's a personal challenge, I cut myself some slack. Also just completed at the back end of a woman's summit, a 30 day customer challenge where we create with the participants, their entire system for dealing with and handling customers from cradle to grave, so to speak, from beginning to end, from before they're even a customer to attracting them all the way to creating lifelong customers, raving fans, and actually people that help us build our businesses because they love us so much. That's that whole challenge. Then, we're starting a new, I'm starting with an amazing woman on the 15th. We're starting a 90 day. And I think we decided yesterday it's going to be on YouTube, YouTube live, because selfishly, I want to learn 
and figure out how to use YouTube. I think it's a, it's a giant opportunity that I have certainly been overlooking and missing as I've been playing on Facebook and Facebook Live and then LinkedIn and Instagram. And now <clears throat> YouTube's been there the whole time, but I haven't been paying attention to it. Mainly because I falsely believed it was going to be too hard to figure out. And I will admit, I screwed up the first couple of days when I was trying to use it. But now I kind of have got it figured out. So I'm like, well, it's not really any harder than doing a Facebook Live. It is, however, a different animal in terms of how you approach it. It isn't a you hop on and you talk like I'm talking right now on Facebook Live. You just talk about what your subject is. It's much more problem oriented or and well solution oriented people go to youtube to well either to be entertained or to solve a problem last time i went to youtube it was because i wanted to learn how to unstop a toilet and nobody was home and the plunger wasn't able to do it i don't even know what it was clogged with somebody must have thrown something down it but i didn't know how to unclog it so <clears throat> and luckily what i learned on youtube worked because we're in Wisconsin and the pipes get cold and so it's just a matter of putting hot water down it. So we go to YouTube and I almost never go to YouTube unless I want to learn something, I want to be entertained or I want to solve a problem. So my focus and how we're going to do that 90 day challenge and how we create our content for that is very different than how we do it for a Facebook live challenge or a LinkedIn challenge or a, a challenge that we would do in a different platform or a different format. We're starting that on April 15th. Then <clears throat> what else have I got going on for challenges? Challenge of moving. I'm still moving. I know. Can you believe it? It's taking forever. <laughs> but that's because I'm a bit of a hoarder and I save everything and a pack rat. I know I like pack rat better than hoarder, but um, I'm, my, I've challenged myself. There's another challenge to get rid of 90% of the physical things that surround me, the physical things that I own. And I'm holding myself accountable to that. So sometimes I have to go through things twice because I'll only have gotten rid of like 60%. And I'm like, nope, there's another 30% to go. So challenges. I'm also creating and doing, it's not really a challenge, but it's a lesson and a program about challenges on a platform called Funnel Kitchen. So there's a whole lot of stuff about challenges going on. Now, why am I so attracted to challenges? Because my whole life has been a challenge, right? I happen to be one of those people that have experienced health challenges and chronic pain for, well, you know, the vast majority of my life and have had to deal with that and make sure that I could still function in spite of that going on in my life. And not everybody does that. Not everybody deals with it. It's a lot easier to just give in to challenges and just you know, play small and live teeny and not do anything and blame the thing that's going on in our life. You know, we can blame our relationships. We can blame our past. We can blame, you know, failures. We can blame somebody that said something mean to us in second grade. We can, we can do that. We can live in the past or we can say, yep, that happened. You know what? It happened. There's nothing I can do about it. It's in the past. What am I going to do now? And for me, my way of addressing that has always been to create my own challenge and not that I haven't been because most people think of challenges as like obstacles or things that are in their way I think of them as building blocks and stepping stones and because I do that I use them to move me forward to make progress to go where I want in my life not to stop me from doing anything so how do you approach challenges how do you feel about challenges do you do them? Do you like them? Would you like to learn how to do them? Because like I said, I'm doing a course on Funnel Kitchen. So I would love to have feedback from a couple of people on that in terms of what they think, because I'm sure that not only will I send people there, but we'll also do some more with it in the other world because I've been doing all these challenges for decades and I really never shared my process. And over the years, over the decades, I have created a very cool process and how to do those. I don't want to make sure I share that. So Go out, make it an awesome day. That's my, my chat about challenges. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye.